guys. Okay, the spot I've arrived at today. Um, I didn't expect it to be good, good viz today, but I expected a little bit better than what it is currently. Um, it's quite choppy, it's quite milky in the water, so I don't think the viz is going to be very good. At best, it's probably going to be about two or three meters. So I'm going to get kitted up now, and uh, we'll have a little look what's around. I don't know if you can quite see, but the uh, the weather's picked up a bit. It's now raining and also and swell has picked up. Nonetheless, still good viz. We're just going to go out a little bit further now to a couple of little holes and where I caught most of my bass to be honest this year. So after a number of dives I had my first sighting of a bass, but due to the bad viz I wasn't 100% sure on the size and how far away the fish was. But looking back at the video now it was definitely big enough. But I feel like if I'd taken that shot I would have swam past what I'd bump into on my next dive. Still on the search for bass, I dived down onto a sand patch. I recognised exactly where I was at this point, knowing that directly in front of me was a large crack or hole which normally holds a lobster or two. So I flicked on my torch, had a quick scan and what I came across was a large set of eyes coming from the hole. I paused for a few seconds as I realised just how big this conger eel was. I went back to the surface and prepped myself as I knew exactly what I was letting myself into. Congas have the tendency to lock themselves into their holes and can be very difficult to get out. Not only that, once you manage to get them out they can be very aggressive. So before pulling the trigger I made sure that I lined up a good holding shot just behind the eyes. As they predicted this day, the weather had really picked up and it was time for me to head back into shore. Well, I've just managed to get it back onto the um, onto the rocks, back to shore. Stupidly, I didn't think, obviously I've got to walk 20 minutes now back to the car and this thing, I'm not even kidding, it, I don't know how much it weighs, it must be at least 20 kilos. Um, but obviously I'll be interested to weigh it because it is very heavy. Bearing in mind I'm 6 foot 1 in height and this conger eel is taller than me stood upright. So this is by far my biggest fish caught while spearfishing. That's 
Knowing the rough weight of the fish from hauling up the side of the cliffs, I was very excited to get back and weigh the fish. As you can see, the fish weighed 36.97 pounds, which puts it at 16.76 kilos. So despite what most people think about congas, they're actually really good to eat. If you can get over the fact that they're quite scary and they look like dragons, I suppose, and they're very slimy, uh, you know, you really enjoy it. I'm gonna cook up the conga in part two of this video and if you've got any recipe ideas or any little tips, I'll be very grateful. So just leave them in the comment section down below and I'll quickly read through them uh, before cooking the conga. Also, uh, for a little competition, I suppose, if you can guess exactly what was in the conga's stomach, so what the conga had been eating, uh, and the exact quantity, I'll send something either spearfishing related uh, for Christmas or maybe a bottle of wine or something in the post. Um, obviously sanitized because of COVID. As usual, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions relating to this video or any other videos, please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and don't forget to turn the notification bell on. It's completely free to do so. It will just inform you when I release a new video. I really appreciate the support. So thank you very much.